Hello and good evening, Year Six. Um, I'm sure it's going to take you a little bit of time to join us. So as ever, we'll give you a couple of minutes. Um, for those of you that are with us already, nice and keen, hopefully you've been waiting in the lobby. We have to go through the usual housekeeping before we jump into some fantastic art today. So first of all, as a reminder, what you need to do is you need to take a photo or as if you were taking a photo of the code for Slido, click the link and that will take you to Slido. I am already in there waiting to see people join me. Once you have done that, what I want you to do is just put a message in the chat with your name and your score. Okay. Once you've done that, I can start seeing who's in there, who's kind of contributing throughout the session. If the code doesn't work in terms of the QR code, you can go to slido.com and you can type in tonight's code, which is 5049868. Okay. I can see Jazz already in the chat, some people coming into the chat. That's great. When you get a chance, guys, see some people saying hello to me already. If you change your username in your profile, so your name, first name, and your primary school, every time you comment, I'll be able to know exactly who you are and where you are from. I'm seeing some people that I saw last week, so we've got a bit of consistency, which is great. We'll just give you a minute or two to do that. Hello to everyone in the chat. I will reply in the chat once I hand over to Miss. For now, I can just see people joining the chat, which is great. And very shortly, I'll take you through the website as a reminder. So if you change your name, just once again, guys, change your name a little bit like Elizabeth has their first name and then primary school at the very least. And we can see who you are and where you're from. You can see people saying, hello, Mr. Muse. That's great. OK, we've got a few people in there. So what we've got to show you, first of all, is where you access everything in terms of transition. So the first thing is you go to the school website, OK? You click on Academy Life, as you can see at the top of the screen, and then click on Year 6 Transitions. Now, in there are loads and loads of documents that show previous talks as well as what's to come. Now, obviously, today we're looking at art, OK? And we've got Mrs. Priscott delivering art today, which is going to be absolutely fantastic. And we're moving away from those core subjects we've had immediately. And now we've got some stuff that's really creative and we can start looking at art and the great work we do here in the art department. Now, in the art department, Miss is playing a huge part in terms of what you do on a daily basis, whether she's teaching you directly. Because I know that you guys tend to ask me whether the teacher delivering is definitely teaching you. I can't tell you that because we don't yet know. But that very well will be the case for a lot of you. Now, in the document here, as ever, we've got a couple of things that you will need for today's session. So first of all, what you've got is the worksheet for the virtual art club today. So on there, you have a worksheet and a reminder for you to make a copy of this worksheet. And we can get that kind of sent over to myself. And that way, what will happen is I'll be able to look at all your work. So as you can see on the screen, you open it up, click file and make a copy. OK. Once you've done that, you'll be able to input onto the document. And again, if we have any issues, just let me know immediately in the chat and I'll give you a bit of advice on what you can do. OK. Secondly, towards the end of the session, you will have a checkout. Now, as you know, and we've mentioned it previously, in all of our lessons at the academy, we finalize a lesson with a checkout just to see exactly what you've learned and to see some areas that maybe in the next lesson we need to go over just to ensure that you've got all of that information and making sure that moving forward, you have it ready. So when you're going into your next lesson, you're not having any kind of gaps. We're filling them straight away. OK, so your checkout will look like this. We've added your name this week. I will say well done to everyone who completed the English checkout last week. We had a lot of five out of fives, which is great. And I'm sure we're going to see some similar results in art today once we've done the session and we've done the checkout. 
So that's housekeeping. Now, I don't want to waste any more time and I want to give you the fun stuff. So I'm going to hand over to Mrs. Priscott and I'm going to be in the chat, guys. Any questions, pop them to me. And in time, I will answer those questions. Over to you, miss. Thank you, sir. Um, welcome. It's great to be here. I'm really looking forward to doing some really exciting artwork with you today and also when you join with us in September. Um, so we're going to start off with our check-in um, and you may have already seen on the worksheet kind of a little hint to what we're going to be looking at today. Um, we're going to start off by thinking about our personal preferences, kind of what makes us us, what do we like, what kind of things do, do we like kind of have in our minds that we feel define us. And I've got a list of things that I want you to kind of list on there and you'll be able to start adding some of these and kind of telling us in your, the chat as well on Slido just so we can kind of get to know you a little bit. So there are different kind of headings there. For example, I, you might have a particular favourite food or subject. I want you to start thinking about what it is that is your favourite and start adding those in the check-in. I'm going to give you three minutes and only three minutes to have a go at doing this. You need to think quite quickly, kind of thinking on your uh, feet. Um, and I'm going to talk about my examples as you're answering as well. So I'm going to start off by kind of adding my favourite food. My favourite food personally is pizza. I treated myself to a Domino's uh, the other day, which I really enjoyed. OK, so I would definitely have pizza as my favourite food, I think. Um, my favourite subject obviously is going to be art. So I'm going to be putting down art. OK, you might be putting down science or PE. Um, hopefully I've got a few arts in there as well. That'd be nice. Hmm, favorite number. That one's a bit difficult. Um, my favorite number. Let me think. Um, I'm not actually sure. I think this one's a more difficult one. Sometimes people do have a favorite number and have a number that they say is their favorite number. I'm gonna just say my date of uh, year of birth, which just shows how quite maybe how old I am. I'm gonna put 1982. That's my favorite number because that was the year I was born. Um, so I'm gonna go with that one. Um, so I want you to be thinking about all of these things and what kind of things make you you. OK, so so far, just a bit of a recap. I've done my favorite food, subject and number. Um, favorite letter. OK, so think about what your favorite letter of the alphabet might be. I'm going to go for a T, I think. OK, so T is going to be my favorite letter of the alphabet. Again, you might want to use your initials or your parents' initials or your cat's initials um, or, you know, whatever you want to use kind of if you're to try and inspire you. If you're not sure if you have a favorite letter, that's quite an unusual one, isn't it? Um, then the next one, favorite animal. That might be a little bit easier for some of you. Um, animal is quite a nice one um, to kind of think about what your favorite animal might be, whether it's a lizard or an iguana. Like uh, quite a lot of people are into kind of reptiles at the moment, I think. Um, I'm going to go with a cat. I'm a cat person, guys. OK, so if you come into my classroom you're um, in September, you'll be hearing lots about my cats and all about kind of the cats uh, artwork that there are out there, because that's kind of very much the artwork I'm doing at home at the moment. It's all about cat designs. Um, so I'm going to go with cat as my favourite animal. And lastly, hobbies. What interests you? Do you like playing computer games? Do you like using your phone? What kind of hobbies are you interested in doing in your spare time? Um, whether it's kind of maybe reading or puzzles or, you know, maybe there's lots of different, there's lots of different hobbies out there. A lot of people getting into Dungeons and Dragons these days at Bexley Academy. So like maybe things like, maybe a bit more things that are a bit more out there. You've got, we've got chess clubs, got basketball clubs, maybe it's a sport, maybe it's football, maybe you're part of the local football club. Um, I'm going to put photography. Okay, I like taking photos in my spare time. Okay, so I'm going to put photography. OK, so I'm writing my list. And I think the three minutes is more than up. But I'm going to show you my list there. OK, I've written my list now. Hopefully you've been adding some of your examples on that worksheet and also putting them in the chat so we can just get to know you a little bit more and kind of think about what makes you tick as well. And what kind of what do you kind of think? You know, what describes you and your kind of choices um, of your favorite things? Um, so we're going to use this check in, OK, to prepare us for some artwork. So we want to have these ready and available because we're going to be using them to help us create our own art piece, which we're going to start pretty much in a minute or two. OK, 
So, so if you could just change the slide to the next slide. Before we do start our own artwork, what I want to do is I'm going to introduce you to our exploration. Now, this slide, and you may have seen these in the other subjects, is very typical of what you'll see in a um, typical art room. By the way, I'm on the side because I've got my own sketchbook there. Um, so this is quite a typical slide of what you'd see in an art lesson. Okay, with a key question for the term. We've obviously got term five, because we're in term five. And we are looking at how can you use art techniques to illustrate your personal identity? We've already listed a few things that can illustrate our personal identity. And we're going to see how we can use art techniques to kind of communicate those more. And that's the overarching question. But the specific question today, I think, is quite interesting one. It's how do you create a self-portrait? That's a picture of yourself without drawing a face. Um, and I think this is quite a challenge because I think a lot of the time when you want to, like, if you think about the way like who are you as a person you'll draw get drawn to kind of who you are as a person by the way you look um and like you know what makes you you is maybe your facial features the way what you see in the mirror when you get up in the morning but actually there are lots of ways um to be able to show yourself as a person without actually seeing your face and we kind of think about kind of your characteristics and what is on the inside rather than what's on the outside and that's what today's all about in our terms of our art lesson today so I'm going to start off by having a look at the next slide, please, there, and discuss and think about kind of different ways that you could show identity in a piece of artwork. I've kind of talked to you a little bit about kind of some things that we might be exploring, but what do you think um, you can do to um, identify yourself in a piece of artwork that's not necessarily a portrait? Um, so have a think about it. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes, and I'd like you to add some Come, uh, some information into the chat for me um, and then Mr Muse will be able to respond to those and um, speak, um, talk about those as well with you guys to kind of think about if anyone's got any good ideas about different ways you can show your own identity yourself in a piece of artwork. I'll give you two minutes. Amazing. I'm getting some good responses so far straight away. Have a couple more minutes now to now add those to the uh, chat in the slider. If you want to share, you don't have to share. It's nice sometimes to keep them to yourselves, but it's also useful to kind of share to give other people ideas as well. So what different ways can we show our identity in a piece of artwork? Miss, we've got some great answers coming in already. I'm just mindful of the chat. It's going a bit crazy in here, so I want to stay on top. Ooh. So we've got Elizabeth has from East Wickham has said you could write or draw things that you like. Um, no, Isla from Belmont has said you could use different colours and patterns that you like in your in your drawing. Yeah, I love that. I love different colours, especially colours. Definitely much my like favourite part of art for sure. We've got a fantastic one here that I really like, and it says from Jazz, a way you can show is maybe drawing how you would kind of see your personality. Mm, that's a bit, that's very conceptual. That's very high um, high level, actually, there. I quite like that answer. That's a really strong answer, actually. Um, these are some really good answers coming in, and I think you're exactly right. There are lots of different ways of being able to draw yourself that isn't necessarily about drawing a portrait, and that's kind of the challenge we've got today. So I'm going to talk you through what we're going to be having a go at drawing now. We're going to spend the next 15 minutes kind of preparing a drawing, which you may finish in the 15 minutes, or you might want to spend a bit more time adding different details to um, afterwards. So we are doing a drawing activity. So you need to find something you can draw with. OK, so I'm going to be using a ball pen. It is literally a ball pen. It's not like an artist pencil. You don't need an art set today. Uh, it's lovely if you've got them and definitely use them if you have them. OK, you can use a nice pen 2B pencil. But if you haven't got that, a biro or a felt tip pen or if you've got a, like a pad, like a, draw, a digital pad and you want to do it digitally, you can have a go at doing it digitally. That would be completely fine. OK, so obviously everyone here has got some kind of computer or drawing. Maybe you're doing it on your phone. All right. But on, on paint. OK, but any any kind of 
thing that you might have to draw on. And again, paper. Um, if you haven't got um, art paper, and what I'm going to be, I'm using the a lovely sketchbook. You will get when you join us at Bexley Academy a beautiful um, A4 sketchbook like this. We're very lucky in the academy because not all schools um, provide these for um, Key Stage Three, but we do from Year Seven. And you get this really, really. I don't know if you probably can't see in this um, on the video, but you get this really nice kind of thick paper okay so you will get a lovely sketchbook when you join us at basic academy but if you haven't got anything like that today printer paper i've even had people do it on the backs of envelopes before if you've got like a, a big envelope got sent through your post um amazon boxes um you know anything um that's plain like uh, if you've got a cereal box on the other side when there's not the printing side on it anything you can to draw on okay don't feel limited in art to, that you have to have really expensive equipment or all the right things because actually there's so many different things that you can use to draw with so Hopefully, while I've been talking, you've gotten and got yourself a little bit ready, okay, and made sure that you've got something that you can start off with. We're going to start off today by drawing an eye, okay, and you can see the examples on the pictures on the screen as well. We're going to draw an eye in the middle of our page, but we're not going to fill the page of the eye, okay? We're going to draw it nice and large, okay, but we're not going to fill the page. Now, I'm going to draw mine upright like this so you can see it, so please bear with me, all right? And I want you to follow and have a go at draw. Maybe you've got a mirror and you, or a phone on your camera. Uh, I mean, a camera on your phone even, apologies. <laughs> and you might want to use that to have a look at what your eye actually looks like or have a go at doing it from memory, okay? So start thinking about the outline of your eye first, okay? And then think about adding some details. So I am going to start adding my um, iris and my pupil in. And I'm using, like I said, this nice thick black ball pen. So you guys met, it was because it's it's there to hand, but mainly it's actually um, there so you can see it nice and clearly on your screens. And then I might think about adding some eyelashes in it because everyone has eyelashes, okay? Even if you don't kind of accentuate them, everyone has eyelashes. And then maybe you might want to include some down at the bottom as well. All right. So you're drawing a nice eye, kind of the all seeing eye looking out at you as we're creating our artwork. All right. So spend a bit of time now having a go at drawing your eye, which is the first stage of this picture. Adding as much details as you want. Um, and I've done mine with a, with, with a lot of nice white space. And I said, I love color. There's no reason why you won't be able to take these away after this session, after after the 15 minutes is up, and have a go at adding color later if you want to. Again, digitally or with color pencils or felt tip pens, whatever you've got to hand to add some really nice vibrant colors. Um, and someone said earlier that color can really represent you as a person, so you can definitely use that to add to that example as well. Once you've done your eye, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next stage and the next stage is going back to the check-in to remind ourselves of all those key areas that we thought represented us and what we're going to do is we're going to split our page and we're going to do you can do it as many sections as you want okay but i'd recommend six sections obviously because we've done six sections already in our check-in okay now you can decide whether you want to use a ruler for this okay and you and this again starts kind of working out who you are as a person because if you use a ruler and you like to be nice and neat and organized it could be nice and neat you might want to do wavy lines okay so you might want to show that you're kind of it's a bit more wavy and a bit less organized it might not be straight it might be kind of it might they might all be kind of weird like shapes like this but we're trying to separate around our eye into six sections one two three four i've got so far okay hopefully some of you have got some more shapes now Okay, and I'm going to split my page up. So now I've split my page into nice sections, and hopefully you guys have really thought about where you're going to put your sections, as in they might be even, they might be wonky, they might be odd, they might be kind of all circular, okay? And then that, again, will help you, like your picture, become really unique and really individual and be really about yourself. Once you've done this, you're going to use your sections, all right, to really describe you. So you've got the things already there to help you. 
All right, so you can add things in the different sections relating to your check-in to help you. So for example, obviously I said my favorite food was pizza. So I might draw some mini pizzas in like a pattern in my first section. These kind of look like, maybe these look more like hot cross buns, I don't know. Maybe I need to add some more details to them a bit later. Maybe I need to use more sections on my mini pizzas. Okay. I kind of wish now I'd done fruit. I think fruit actually would have looked really nice on here, but. I've gone with my honest favourite, which is junk food, which is maybe not the healthiest. So start adding details to each section. And you don't have to be too precious with this. You can decide. It can be in a nice, neat pattern. Or, again, you can go a bit more ad hoc, as I have done. All right? So you decide how ordered or unordered you want to go with it so i'm now filling up all the sections of my artwork and i'm hoping that some of you guys are doing it too okay as we're doing this i want to kind of now kind of start introducing you to a bit of kind of the way we would work in art in terms of our expectations and helping guide you with the kind of progress so you know the type of progress you're making so so if you could put the slides back on for me amazing if you could if you could go on to the next slide for me please right on this slide here it gives us the question and the task but it also shows you some different kind of activities or different ways to be able to tell you yourself what stage you're at with your artwork. So, for example, if you're developing your artwork and your art techniques, you've created a basic drawing of an eye and included some of your favorite things in the background. If you're securing in that, okay, you'll have added tone to it. All right, so tone is a different technique. And tone is when you add light to dark areas. And you can see on this example, there is like some shaded areas and some light areas in there. So you might wanna add some tone to it. Now, I can't really show you tone that easy with my pen, uh, with my pen. so I might go and get my pencil now from my drawer, my trusty art drawer. And I might start shading some in to try and push my work up to that next level so I can try and nab the securing level. So think about that, what you can then do to try and push your work up so it gets to the next stage. So I'm shading it in. I'm going quite dark around where the kind of corner of my eye is. And again, obviously, you're going to have to bear with me because I'm kind of doing this front ways on and then I'm going to follow the, the direction of the eye but this time I'm going to make it a bit lighter so you can show the light to dark tones coming in if I want to get some really light tones I might grab a rubber and get some highlights in now if you haven't got a pencil to get your tones, all right? You can also do that really nicely in Biro. Biro is amazing for use of tone. And in digital, you might be able to use gradient tools and that will help you get tone and you'll still be able to get to your securing with that as well. Um, and then finally, all right, if you want to really push yourself and go to the next level, you might want to go to kind of a mastering level. If it's a mastering level, your drawings will be accurate. OK, so my pizzas aren't looking that accurate at the moment. OK, but if you want to get to a mastering level, you might add some more details to this. You might try and make sure that the circle shapes were a bit more like kind of precise in the way they looked. And that will be really looking to try and be more accurate with your design and your outlines. So really push yourself to getting that accurate mastering um, in the, the actual kind of quality of the work. I'm going to start by, I'm going to use, oh, my letter was T, wasn't it? I'm going to do some T's here now, I think. Even choosing whether you've gone capital letter or lowercase letter, that says something about you as well, you know, because everything you do is the choices and the decisions that you make can describe or say something about you as a person. Okay. 
We're going to stop. Well, I'm going to stop there for a minute. And what I want to do is I want to do a quick checkpoint with you. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick checkpoint with you. I'm going to ask you a question on the slides. And what I want you to do is I want you again to answer in the um, Slido and have a think about what your, your response could be for this to see if you get the correct answer. So. We've got a key word here. The key word is identity. So the key word, I've used this quite a lot of times and talked to you a bit about what identity is. Okay, what I want you to think about is what that key word could actually mean. Is it A, a person's characteristics that make them who they are? Or is it B, the way someone looks? All right, so I want you to think, is it A, a person's characteristics that make them who they are? or B the way someone looks. Have a think about it and add your answer in the uh, chat on Slido, okay? A, a person's characteristics, or B, the way someone looks. Have a think about what you think the word identity means or what it could represent and put that answer in the chat for me, please, so we can have a look and see if you can are grasping the idea and the point of today's question. OK, hopefully you got the answer correct. And as Sirs put it on the screen, it's gone a bit strange with the kind of typography there, but on the screen, it gives you the right answer, which is, yes, it is a person's characteristics that make them who they are. And that is definitely the correct answer. So well done, all of you that actually wrote that answer down correctly in the chat. It means that you're really following the instructions and following what you're having to do in today's activity. So we're gonna, I'm going to go back to adding some more details into my picture to try and get this finished off. I'm going to think carefully about my other topics. Now I'm going to go back to my check-in to remind myself what I did. Oh, photography. I might do a photography one next. Okay, so I'm going to draw some cameras, I think, on my next one. So decide what your favourite activity was and how you're going to add it to your page. I'm loving my floating cameras. I'm doing quite an old-fashioned camera, so maybe that's saying something about me. I said to you I was born in 1982. So the mathematicians there amongst you, I know you did a maths um, online activity, was it maybe possibly last week. Okay, some of you might have worked out how old that makes me. I'll put this in here, my favourite number. activities there. Oh yeah, cats. How could I forget cats? Hopefully you guys are all enjoying the activity at home as well and you're having a go at creating your own portrait. And you can see that I'm going totally cartoon with this, not realistic. I don't know what that says about me and my personality. Okay, I might do some bushy tails. The heads and tails of cats. I'm liking that. I will just say, Miss, I've just asked them to let me know in the chat what they're adding um, so oh. I can shoot them out. Um, and I will say that your question, they're obviously paying attention, all of these guys here, because every single person responded A, every single one in the chat. So that's absolutely fantastic. I'm just hanging on. We've got... Elizabeth saying added art droids. Elizabeth, specifically, what have you added? You can see Miss has added some really cool things. Pizza sticks out for me, so that probably says a lot about me as well. Um, Callum from Bursting Wood has added a camera as well, uh, and also cats and dogs. Um, Alex has added some dice to his Ooh, image. Nice. 
added some dice. That's that's quite interesting. Keep keep them coming in the chat, guys. I'll, I'll shout a few more out so we can get an almost visual picture in our minds. And I'm hoping that you're going to send them in to me um, after the session so that we can share some of these next week. And I'll obviously share some uh, with Miss as well. So any more in the chat, guys, just let me know. What are you adding to your drawing? What have you added in any of the sections? So Elizabeth has added a paint palette and a painting. So you must, you've added art within oh, Elizabeth there. I like, I like that. I like that a lot. That's good. I'm doing kind of my cartoony style kind of clip art paint palette at the moment. We've got Miss as well. We've got chocolate. We've got a letter, a ballet shoe, a penguin as well. And we've got Jazz has added a big J because of the name. Michael nice. added a red panda and video games. And one of my favourites, chocolate cake. <laughs> I like the red panda, actually. That's a very unusual animal to pick. I like that. They're quite, um, they're quite, they can be quite um, angry, red pandas. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to start finishing mine off, ready to be put aside, and I'll hopefully be able to add some colour to this later on this evening. So, yeah, so that's basically what we're having a go at doing, and our time is almost up. Um, so hopefully, you've, it sounds like lots of you have done lots of already, but please, if you haven't finished, get them finished and send them to Sir, because it would be lovely to see some of these um, examples in the department. We might even be able to get them posted on the website, um, you know, to kind of get them, you know, so everyone can kind of see each other's artwork as well as just seeing mine as well. Um, it would be great to see some of your examples and some of your ideas. What we normally do in an art lesson to finish off is we normally do a summary, and that normally is in the, like, kind of along the lines of a what went well and even better if. And I'm guessing that quite a lot of you are used to doing the what went well and even better ifs in your primary schools as well. But if you're not, we're going to have a go at doing one now so so if you could put the slide on you might have to skip a couple of slides i think if you put this i think it's like the second to last slide before the checkout maybe oh perfect um so basically there's some sentence starters here to help you as well all right so think about what you've done really well and this is meant to be a really positive experience all right so you really can think carefully if you're not sure what to use in your writing you can also use you know some of the kind of key words that you've looked at today like the use like for example the word identity i think i've used all the materials you've used okay so i think i have used identity um i've used identity successfully i think i've used pen successfully i think i've used color pencil successfully i like how my picture displays my interests i like how my picture displays my characteristics okay i think um using lots of different types of patterns works well okay think carefully about what you think went really well and if you can add these around the picture so when you send them into so we can see a full um you know evaluation as well that would be fantastic and then when you do an even better if, it really isn't meant to be kind of a negative thing. It's meant to be really thinking about what you just need to do next time. For example, it might be next time, for my one, next time I think I wouldn't go cartoon. I've done it quite cartoony and because I've, I've been kind of doing it like kind of at a weird angle and I think I'd spend a bit more time on it perhaps and do it more maybe accurate and realistic to try and get to that mastering so maybe think about what you might want to do in terms of the even better if like for next time as well um, and that would be your next kind of like steps um, that you'd be able to use and take on to your next lesson spend a couple of minutes now writing your summary and then what you'll need to do after that is um, start to complete your checkout which I believe is on the website for you to be able to access as well and that also will be a good way for us to see like uh, how much you've enjoyed today um how much you've understood from the lesson um or club it's kind of a cross between a lesson and a club really we have lots of art clubs as well by the way um not just lessons so there will be there is an after school and a lunchtime club going on at the moment i think so you would be able to definitely take part in some of those um extracurricular art activities as well which we'd love to see you at next year Thank you very much, Miss. Absolutely brilliant. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Just that little snippet of art, like we know with these virtual clubs, it's all about getting an introduction to the kind of things that you do here. 
And I can see a lot of people, I'm just seeing some comments, Miss, you may want to see a lot of people very happy with their artwork. They're very, very happy with their artwork. Isla, I'm going to look into the checkout issue right now. And then we've got, I'm quite happy, although I would like to be more focused on my time and speed because I've added quite a lot of detail. So Callum, I'm guessing you maybe have left yourself a little bit to do. And you're absolutely correct. That's something that when you're in lesson, Miss would be able to guide you even more on the level of detail and the time it takes, because the more detail you put in, the more time it's going to take for sure. Then we can see Chris has said, I liked how my picture showed me and not something or somebody else. So it's really showed themselves through their art. Elizabeth from East Wickham asking already about art club. We do have multiple art clubs actually currently running. We have two separate art clubs with different focus and enrichment would be starting immediately when you come back okay we'll have a program in place and we'll hopefully i'm sure we will i'm sure we'll have some sort of art club we've actually got a real focus on art because like miss said we've got two specific art clubs we've also got currently running a warhammer club which is to do with art and painting models so a different type of art and we also, like Miss said, Dungeons and Dragons is starting to play a really, really big part. And a lot of students have been speaking to me about that and how they can use that fantasy element in their kind of artwork. So absolutely fantastic. We've got Tobias has said, I like my picture. It is inspirational and I will do more of this kind of art. I would love you to send me that, Tobias. I'd love to be inspired by your artwork as well. And a lot of people are saying thank you for knowing that Art Club is going to be there almost immediately. So really, really big thank you for, for Miss in the chat. I can see a lot of love for Miss in the chat for the session today. And I just want to say thank you very much, Miss. I'm going to let you get off and I'm going to speak to these very excitable year sixes. If there's anything you want to say before you go, now's your time. Oh, thank you. And I haven't got much more to say. As you can see, you can probably tell I do talk quite a lot. So I will try to keep it short and sweet. But yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing your artwork. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys um, in September. Well, even some of you maybe a little bit before when you come in to visit the school. So yeah, just um, thank you so much for taking part in today's activity. See you later. Bye. You can't move it. <laughs> OK, so, guys, I'm just going over quite a few things and just making sure that we are understanding everything that's coming up, uh, everything that's happened so far, because very shortly we obviously go on a little bit of a break. But we've got one more week before half term. Now, next week is the turn of music. OK, and the fantastic Mr. Yates will be putting on a session for you to do with music, as you can see here on the website. Wednesday, the 24th of May. OK, so exactly the same time as we keep it nice and consistent. Next week, Sir is going to be showing us a huge plethora of music and musical instruments, the kind of things you'll be doing and getting you involved, as he loves to do in his lessons, in the music that we're actually doing. I'm very intrigued to see how this one goes, because in terms of specific equipment, we will obviously help you with that in school. But let's be honest, anything could be an instrument if we use it in the right way. So that's a, going to be something really interesting to see with Sir. And I'm sure you're all going to love Sir's delivery. He's absolutely fantastic. I'm really looking forward to showing you what music has to offer at the Academy. Now, another reminder, my email is on screen, just in case any of you were struggling to remember it from last week. Now, as we've had such a visual kind of um, virtual club today, obviously we need to give you the opportunity to show off the art that you would have actually had and the art that you would have completed. And a lot of you, I can see, I've got the chat in front of me right here, that a lot of people are saying how much they really enjoyed their art, okay? Really enjoyed their art and they, some of you even said an inspiration, which I really love to hear. Now, please, any images you've got, you can either scan them if you have the facility to send to me or take a picture of your art and fire it over to my email. As you can see on screen, rmuse at Bexley Heath Academy, just to make sure that when you send that to me, put your name and your school. 
And next week, we can shout out a lot of people and a lot of artwork. We can get it on screen. We can share it just to celebrate your success. Something we love to do as an academy with our students, celebrating success. And we want to start, even though you're not quite our students just yet, we want to start already celebrating your success. So please get your artwork over to my email address. Doesn't have to be right now because you might want to finish it and polish it up. You can get it to me at any point before next week at rmuse at bexleyheathacademy.org. Now, I can see here, Jazz has asked me, may not be on introduction day as I'm going on PGL. Is that fine? If you're unable to make the transition day, okay, because you're doing some of your school, that obviously is absolutely fine. We hope to see as many of you as possible on those days. OK, I've got the transition document in front of me and I'm going to go over some key dates in a moment. But firstly, let me just say a reminder, music next week and also by next Friday, you'll be sent a letter that is going to outline the future events coming up for yourself and your parents. All the information will be in the letter. It will include what we've got coming up. We've got PE in the first week back. So we've got a nice practical week back in something we call a wow, a workout of the week with PE that's going to get your blood flowing. You're going to be really excited. We're going to be doing all this exercise and we can do that together on the first one back in week one of term six. But you'll be reminded in the letter. OK, we also still have geography and history to come. Two fantastic subjects that often run parallel to one another. So we've put them back to back week after uh, PE. So we've got week two, we've got geography. And week three, we've got Horrible History Club. Now, some of you might read or have read Horrible Histories, or you might have seen the show on TV. So that's going to be a really fun take on history and something that you may actually have a look at. Now, in the group, I've got some fantastic answers um, to many of our questions today and also some brilliant questions I just want to quickly touch upon from Chris at Pelham and Jacob at Crook Log asking when the transition day is. This will come out to you in the letter, but so that you've got some knowledge right now, we're looking at Tuesday and Wednesday, the 4th and 5th of July as our days on site. Now, this will give you an opportunity to experience two days at the academy You'll meet some people that you're obviously going to start with in your um, year seven in September. It gives you an introduction as well for some of the kind of procedures, some of the day to day things that we have. OK, that we have going throughout the day. Jazz, I can see you've asked if we have older siblings, are they allowed to help us around? Now, a lot of people will likely be in their lessons. But we will definitely have people on the ground helping you, showing you where to go, whether that's teachers or some students that are helping in that regard. Your parents will drop you off for transition and it will be almost like you've started year seven slightly early. But just to give you a little bit less pressure, a little bit more of a taste of what you actually experience at the academy. OK, whilst we're here, guys, do we have. Any further questions? I've seen Ruby from Belmont has said, I've seen horrible histories at the theatre. I'm sure, Ruby, when you have that in week three of term six, you're really going to enjoy that. You're really going to enjoy that. All details on times, Chris, will be coming out to you shortly. So keep an eye out for the letter. We're going to be sending that letter out, our events letter, next week in the last week of term Gives you a nice week of half term to digest everything that we've kind of done and also what's coming up. Any further questions, guys? I've just got the chat in front of me. Any additional questions or comments you want to say? What sport clubs do the school have? Uh, what sports clubs do the school have? Jacob has asked. Now, Jacob. We have so many different clubs running and I can just give you some examples because each term we slightly differ on what we offer. So you get a wide range of sports. But right now I can tell you we've got cricket, we've got rounders, we've got football, we've got tennis all running at the moment. 
And last term and next term, we might have some slightly different sports clubs running. And in the first week back, when you see Mr Sheehan delivering a fantastic workout of the week for PE, you'll be able to ask him exactly what he kind of wants to offer in the first month back. Because like I said, we like to vary as much as possible just to give you an exposure to loads of different sports. Because you might one day try a different sport and all of a sudden you think, you know what, I really like this sport. I've not done it before. I've now joined this club at school and I think it's something I'm going to pursue. So it's just opening your mind up as well to many different ideas. OK, I'm just looking in here. Guys, I cannot stress enough. I really, really, really want you to ensure that you are sending your artwork to my email. I'm so desperate to see this artwork in my inbox. Hopefully some I can see already tomorrow. OK, if you're still finishing it, though, in the coming days, I'll be looking out for it nevertheless. And a reminder, because your parents will likely send it from their email, just put your name and your school because I want to shout out the artwork next week at the beginning of the music session for Transition. Anything further, guys? Keep the comments coming. Hi, sir. Hello, miss. I thought I'd come over and keep you company. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a question that has come up a few times. I'll just go ahead and answer that. Um, it's about transition day and what do you what are we expecting for the young people to wear? Um, ideally, because you're going to have a PE lesson, you're going to have normal lessons. What we normally advise is that you come in in your um, school's PE kit or um, something that almost remotely looks like a PE kit. So a plain T-shirt and joggers. OK, it's what you wear for your transition day. Now, if there are any changes for this year, because obviously I'm just behind the scenes. So if Sir wanted to look different, what Sir will do is Sir's going to communicate that through um, the communications that we send out to your parents as well. Um, one of the things I really wanted to stress on year six, please do tell your friends in your school to join the sessions as well. So if your bestie is not coming to BA, your bestie can still be part of, you know, these um clubs that we're running okay so you can get more and more people involved as well and almost sort of look at um what we do is when says starts to really um celebrate you we count points as well so if you've got lots of people from belmont actually participating and completing the checkout belmont gets a big massive shout out so i might even send a box of something to your school so get more and more people from your primary school to join the session. So it's not exclusive to BA students only. We can have a thousand people in here. We don't mind. We can accommodate everybody, anyone, because we really enjoy doing these sessions. And we, the more that we have, the, the merrier. We, we love the fact that you're all here interacting with us. We sit down after and read all your comments and just think about how enthusiastic you are and how, you know, um, we're all looking forward to, you know, to seeing you guys in September. Now, if your friends do decide to join and they're not coming to BA, does it matter? It's still the same thing. We're going to read their comments. Um, obviously, we do expect respect. So just tell them that, you know, they've got to be respectful and mindful and so on and so forth. Perfectly OK. OK. Um, if we don't have any more comments, we can bring today's session to, um, session to a close. Yeah. All good. All good, miss. Another great session with these year sixes. So we might want to repeat the date again. So Chris from Pelham has actually asked, what's the date for transition again? OK, so I've got it in front of me. So just listen up, guys. We've got here Tuesday the 4th and Wednesday the 5th of July. So Wednesday and Tuesday, the 4th and 5th of July, guys. OK. Um, and if there are no more questions, we can bring the session to a close. Guys, it's been fun having you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week, Wednesday. And from us here at BA, it's bye for now. Bye-bye.